I have two two movements that I'm working with, and so that's going to determine what I talk about, like uh, a philosophy, um, a, like a like a naturalistic form of spirituality that I'm trying to promote, and also um, animal rights activism. Um, so maybe take a vote. Who? What do you want to hear about? Like, first one. First one. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Um, I wasn't prepared for that at all. <laughs> like I literally typed up the speech about the other thing, but okay. So, all right. So it's just off the cuff, I guess. Um, I was a, an atheist activist for a long time. Um, it's a really long story, but basically, I um, moved away from organized religion and uh, structured um, evangelical Christianity. And having learned so much about the origins and histories of religion. And I delved into a philosophy called pantheism. I don't know how many of you know about pantheism, if you've ever heard of it. Um, essentially, uh, it is the theological um, notion that equates the universe with God. So the laws of nature, the forces and powers of nature, um, are really uh, what represent the, the highest source of, of creative power and, and wisdom and, and inspiration. Um, Einstein was a pantheist, Carl Sagan, Carl Jung, um, that just all these great uh, philosophers and thinkers throughout history, um, they espouse this belief system, uh, but it's never been um, codified. It's never been really formally established. It, um, it represents uh, like, like a theological concept that exists within a lot of different world religions, um, but it's never really existed in, um, uh, in a structured way. Uh, and so I also recognize that um, the philosophy itself is sort of stagnant and nebulous and open to interpretation. And so about five years ago, I came up with Biopan, which is um, biopanthe short for biopantheism. And I added the bio um, prefix to it, uh, signifying life, that life should be our, our priority, like that, that or, you know, um, the idea of pantheism is that the universe is God, that all things are, are sacred and divine, but that's really abstract. So the idea was to sort of distill it and, and give it more focus. And for me, the emphasis and the focus should be on biological life. That's the most important thing. Our biology binds us. Our biology is, is everything, um, and life in the physical world. So what I've been trying to establish and create is a, a community, an assembly of biopantheists or um, you know, pantheistic thinkers, people who espouse uh, spiritual naturalism, which is as opposed to um, supernaturalism, as opposed to uh, archaic um, superstitious beliefs, and uh, you know, like a, the focus and the emphasis on uh, an immaterial world, and and people that have all these delusional beliefs, and, and you know, uh, espouse these these bronze and iron age religions. This is bringing you back to the focus and the emphasis should be on life and in the, in the material world, um, environmentalism, animal rights, uh, and holistic health. So it involves really um, life in the physical world, just the, the human condition. And, and the focus and the emphasis is on um, love and respect for nature. So I'm probably to making it more complicated than it is right now for five minutes, but essentially the idea is it's teaching a love, a deep and profound love and respect for um, the natural world and for nature. So. Um, the natural extension of this is environmental ethics and um, ecological awareness and um, veganism, uh, promoting uh, you know, uh, um, um, sustainability and uh, permaculture and, and uh, c compassion and empathy and, and loving and respecting other life forms. That's the idea. So I have a, a complete explanation of it here, um, but like, I can answer any questions if you guys want. Um, maybe that'll be more productive because I can ramble forever about it. So it may be more pertinent to just answer questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So it's not necessarily spiritual per se, but it's about like just caring about the people around you and about. Well, we and we've in the pantheist community. We've um, and this is another thing. I have several online groups. I have Facebook groups. I have a website. I do podcasts. Um, and uh, and I, I have a meetup group that where we meet, and I also incorporate it into um, my vegan animal rights activism, and they kind of overlap, overlap a little bit. Um, so to answer your question, uh, we've redefined spirituality. So spirituality doesn't mean um, belief in gods and goddesses and, and mystical um, tran transcendent realm, but spiritual means 
a, a deeper uh, awareness of uh, natural processes and living systems. Um, the, um, the reverence and awe you feel when you're watching a sunset or you visit a waterfall and you're hiking in the mountains. And, um, the, it's, it's making um, the, the mundane, the things that, that are all around us, you know, the way plants grow, the way our bodies function, things like that, it's, it's bringing that back to the forefront because so many people have gone so far away um, from um, their, their physical existence. So it's really, it's embracing the fact that we're all animals, you know, and not being ashamed um, to, to be an animal, that we are highly evolved, sentient, sapient beings, and we should, um, we should honor and respect, you know, that, that divinity. So we've, we've redefined divinity as well, that, that, um, that divinity is the life principle that allows all things to evolve and grow, um, you know, stemming, going all the way back to the Big Bang, like that's our source. And, um, so we focus on science and biology and um, uh, evolution and cosmology and things that, that motivate and inspire people um, that are tangible as opposed to um, uh, transcendent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we can't have a transcendent experience or that we can't have a religious experience, but it's getting away from the traditional beliefs um, of, of organized religion, of Judeo-Christian, you know, um, Abrahamic, uh, the Abrahamic faiths, which I believe are destructive and, and damaging to the human psyche. So it's an alternative to religion. And, it, and it, there's a huge focus on community building and bringing together atheists, agnostics, um, secular humanists, pagans who, who aren't hard, um, hard deists, that they don't believe in literal gods and goddesses, but they believe in the personifications and the symbolism that's involved. And so there's a lot of, sim there's a lot of um, uh, Celtic symbolism, things, whatever, whatever moves and motivates and inspires you um, that's, uh, you know, that's real. And so it's called the religion of reality. That's the idea. So any other questions? Did I answer your question? Yeah. yeah. What's, what's your, are you, what's your name? Pafo. Well, Pafo, which okay. is, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I've had, I have meetup groups, I have podcasts, um, I, I've done talks, and uh, I, I organize like nature hikes, and I try to get people, and I have a whole ontological model um, that where we give an explanation for our origins and our purpose, and all the things that religion, you know, feigns to provide, um, we're giving real answers based on science and based on observation and, um, you know, credible, uh, you know, consistent um, demonstrable evidence, you know, as opposed to uh, faith claims. So it's kind of like what you were talking about, with the, you know, building up yeah. like a non-religious community. But um, there is a focus. There is a real. Um, yeah. How do you imagine that? You mentioned like codifying. What? How? how do, yeah. So so like the concept that uh, you know everything is the one living thing, and um, how do you turn that into? You know, I guess like, what would be rules to live by? Or do you do you want? I actually have a ten. I rewrote the Ten Commandments. I have like the the Ten <laughs> Commandments of Nature. You know, where I'm basically if if we could personify nature and it could speak to us and tell us what it requires of us. Um, it's it's basically the human the highest the highest human ideals, the ethical standards that we all seek to live by, um, and it all centers around. Uh, seeing the divine in all things, you know, uh, loving and respecting um, nature and the natural processes, observing the seasons and life cycles. Um, like, yeah, I, there, we, I do have sort of like, like rules and laws and stuff, but they're all sort of self-evident, you know, that like morality is derived from um, the laws of cause and effect and just suffering the consequences of our actions. Either something is healthy and salubrious and life-affirming or it's, or it's destructive and, um, you know, uh, chaotic and, you know, and bad. That's how we judge what's right and what's wrong. So we're not looking to our, you know, archaic, ancient writings or holy books. It's literally um, using critical thinking and logic and reason and, and rationale. So it's kind of like the religion of the scientist, you know. And a lot of scientists are very pantheistic in their in their um, in the way they speak. Richard Dawkins and um, Neil deGrasse Tyson and many others. So. Do you think then there's no element of faith? Well, it depends on faith in what. Like, I, I wouldn't say that faith in and of itself is a virtue because what's the object of that of that faith? You know? That's that's the question. Is it you want to wrap up that sentence? I mean, I, I, like, I could finish. You know, I mean, I'm not sure. I just what, mean yeah. that I think a lot of like a lot of organized religions require you to like take a leap where like something doesn't make sense, but you have to. 
believe in it anyway. But I'm curious, like, if, if within your system there is, like, a rational process to get to... There's absolutely a rational process, but there are two things that, um, that are speculation that were, I extrapolate, and that's our ineffable pre-Big Bang origins, like what initiated the Big Bang, and where we're headed in the future, like, like our future evolution as a species, like where all life is evolving into. And I have um, a, model, a model for that, like a cyclical model that's actually based on the, um, the energy pattern of the torus. I don't know if you guys know what a torus is, but all fruits and vegetables um, operate under this this energetic pattern, that's how life grows, that's how trees grow. Our body represents a torus. Um, maybe you've seen the movie Thrive, they talk about it a little bit in that, in that film. But, um, so the point is, um, where we're going and where we came from are actually the same, and it's a cycle. And it, I'm not gonna explain it more later, but the idea is that it, uh, it's providing answers, um, but admittedly, that's speculation, because no one knows what, right. what was before the Big Bang, and no one can see the future. But I believe we can extrapolate and we can observe through living systems and natural processes and see that all life is becoming conscious and self-aware. Like the universe is literally creating ecosystems and environments that end up producing conscious life. And that conscious life is self-aware. And, and if you've heard the other philosophers and pantheists speak about it, we are a way for the universe to know itself. Like we are the eyes and ears of the cosmos, you know, like com coming into uh, manifestation that's not too deep you know, you follow me mm -hmm. but the idea of all this is uh, it's a philosophy that I would like to teach and promote that can serve as a healthy alternative to the Abrahamic faiths which I believe are destructive and damaging and um, and provide a community and provide a, a form of spirituality that's completely naturalistic and earth-based and centered around uh, nature and, um, and um, uh, the, the, the concept of the interconnectedness of all things, that, that all things are interconnected and interdependent and, um, and nothing is isolated. There's also this idea of non-duality that all, almost all religious systems, almost all, uh, every form of ism that's negative, racism, sexism, homophobia, uh, speciesism, whatever it is, it derives from the idea that something is separate from you and it's inferior. So what pantheism does, and especially biopan, it unites everything and it brings it all back together. So the idea is that you are just another aspect of me, that we are all literally one. And almost all the ancient religions teach this. And it's, it's basically, animism was an early form. Native American animism believed a lot of the same thing in Taoism, Taoism. So it, it involves all of that. Is that the idea of like oneness? Uh, right, like I remember what, monism, uh, monism. Uh, the documentary about a lot of people when they go to space or Astronauts when they right, see the Earth, right. the, overview, the overview, yeah, the overview effect. That's yeah, right. that's exactly it. That just that sense of how everything is connected. Sure, that, and, and that's just looking at our planet. Right. And then you can zoom out. I mean, there's 8.8 .8 billion Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone. So we know there's more. There's life out there, and literally we're just like a speck in in this vast sea of uh, the cosmos. But we're, we're we're still we're still important. You know, every life um, is, is unique and. And significant, so um, yeah, it's learning your true place in the, in the grand scheme of things. So, and the idea is that I would like to teach and promote this in small groups and, and create like an assembly of people um, instead of seeing churches on every corner, have biopantheist assemblies and have meetings where we go out in nature and we can, you know, observe um, natural phenomena and like watch meteor showers and you know, um, stargazing and, and Eclipses and things that are um, things that are real, you know, things that, that truly inspire us, you know, and like um, help us stay grounded and connected to each other and to the earth. So. Thank you.